Hello, this is Randy Allen from Engraving Concepts. I just wanted to go over a small logo that someone had sent me and said they had to reproduce this, and the artwork was pretty low resolution. So I'm going to open up our CorelDRAW X8 here. And what we're going to do is attempt to create this logo from scratch. With just a couple of easy tools, we're going to uh, draw out the logo, and then we're going to uh, trim some parts away and then use a knife tool. So this is CorelDRAW X8 and I'm going to click on a new document to get started. My default is set to 6x6 six six, always leaving my primary color mode to RGB and 300 dpi. Next I'm going to import the logo using the import button. I'm going to go out to the desktop Find my logo. It's a TIFF image. Import. This was taken off of a fax machine or a fax copy, so uh, it's um, not very about nine by seven. So we're just going to click and drag a box to snap that on the page. So there's our logo that we want to recreate. I'm going to push the letter P to center that so we can get started. What I see are several boxes, and whenever you're trying to create a logo from scratch, you're looking for those primitive basic shapes. So I'm going to use the rectangle tool and just create a rectangle from here over to here, the left side to the right, I'm trying to get in the middle as much as possible. And then I see another rectangle here. And let's see what else. We could try a rectangle from here. Maybe instead of a rectangle, I'm going to push the space bar and that's going to move me back to the pick tool. So the space bar goes back to the pick tool and then I'm going to move to a freehand tool. So with the freehand tool, notice there are many other line tools we can use, but I'm just going to use this freehand tool and so I'm going to click from this side and I'm going to make sure at this point I have snap to objects turned on. So that allows me to snap to that. I'm going to zoom up on this area a little bit better. And what I'm going to do is use my freehand tool to snap a line from this edge down to the middle black area of this edge. Then I'll do the same thing and work my way around the graphic. Clicking here. And if you hold the control key down as you drag, that will constrain that line to be straight or perpendicular. Clicking again with the arrow showing the icon showing a little arrow meaning I'm going to connect or join that line to the line I click on again and snap to my line here. And then we'll just keep working our way around. Click. We'll end that line there. Then we'll come up with this line here over to the top. Not really going any particular order, but just uh, working my way around the graphic, clicking here. And we might want to say from here on up. And notice that CorelDraw is being pretty helpful at this point. Our snap to is snapping to that line, and the uh, ghosting, if you can read this, that's the word perpendicular. So CorelDRAW tells us when we're on a shape or a snap to an endpoint or something that's perpendicular. So we're going to click on this one, come down this far. One more right over here. Okay, so I have a couple of spaces, especially this line right here, that I've got to cut that text through. I also have some empty spaces I need to trim away. So I'm going to use the trim tool and I'm going to create just a box that's about this wide. So using this box I'm going to now what I'm going to say is trim that rectangle. So I'm going to with the box selected first that's going to be used as the cookie cutter to trim away this rectangle. And when I have both of those objects down here in the status line selected I'm going to click on the trim tool so that's going to cut out a portion of an object by using the shape of another object. 
And so quickly we can use that tool to trim that area away. Pretty handy, huh? So we're going to just trim away this area here, holding down the shift key, selecting the bigger rectangle area, and choose trim. Now we can lay our box down or position that down between these two areas. So with the trim box selected first, holding down the shift key, selecting next what we want to be trimmed, and then click trim. So that basically lets us use that rectangle box to trim away those areas in the middle. And then another a tool I want to bring up is the, uh, well maybe before I do that I need to trim away this area right in here. So these areas with the lines can be trimmed holding down the shift key selecting this line and then I can trim that area away. So we got rid of the lines that were in this area so that I'll be able to type in my word enterprises. But I have a difficult time in the old way I used to just unbreak a node and delete the endpoints. But now there's a tool in our uh, toolbox we can use to get rid of that. So this is called the Virtual Segment Delete Tool. Very handy to us to be able to click and drag across that. And it gets rid of that area of selection in between those nodes. So it's just deleting that segment. I would otherwise in the old days have to split that line apart undo the nodes or delete the endpoints of the nodes but here I'm just clicking on around the object to get rid of that. Pushing my spacebar to take me back to the pick tool I'll click on the text tool and top out my word enterprises all caps and then I'll push enter and type out ink not all caps control spacebar when I'm in the midst of typing text Control spacebar is the key on the keyboard to go back to the pick tool. I'm going to lay that right in here. Uh, maybe let's go ahead and break that apart. So we're, we're going to break up these two lines by going to object and break artistic text apart so I can work on it line by line. Next I'm going to go up to view and wireframe. And this is, makes it a little easier to see when I've got to lay text on top of another line to format my engraving area. So it's not quite the right font yet, but we're getting there. Ink, slide that over on here. Alright, so now what we'll do is go back to view and choose enhanced. And with our word selected our artistic font, Let's see if we have a font that might be close. I may not have a particular font that's exact on this computer, but I might have something that's close. Let me make that a little smaller. So view and wireframe. And I'll nudge with my arrow keys. I'm going to nudge that up a little higher so I've got it right on top of the area. Stretch these areas up a little bit. And then I can use the shape tool. Now the shape tool allows me to adjust the spacing in between each letter evenly. So sometimes we might need to stretch that text in just a little bit. So the shape tool allows me to add space between each letter, inner character spacing. If I had multiple lines, then this node would allow me to add space or subtract space between each line. That's the shape tool with the text selected. All right, so let's go back to our view and enhanced. I'm going to go ahead and this, this time go ahead and get rid of the logo. Now, how would I know that I have the logo selected if I just click out somewhere? It may be hard to grab the logo. So we're going to go to the object manager and the object manager clearly shows us by line by line how we can select certain objects and many times it's easier to select an object within the object manager than it is to uh, select it in the graphic window area. 
So now I'm going to click on the TIFF graphic here and push the delete key, get rid of that. Now I can select all my curve lines here, holding down the shift key. I can grab all of those and thicken those up a bit. So I've got my hairline. I don't want those to cut, I just want those to engrave. And then I've got one of the lines going down in here. Let's choose the shape tool. But first let's zoom up on that area. Maybe we want to get those little closer touching letters. So the shape tool is what we would use to manipulate nodes of lines. I'm just going to bring that right down there where it touches. Probably each one of these might be best. It just touches the text. I use this graphic to etch really small, about um, half inch that was going on metal with a fiber laser. So the detail had to be really um, able to be seen at small sizes and, and it turned out just right. And then we can change that back from red to black by right clicking. So since those are curves or lines and not a, a pixel or a text, we're not going to left click, we're going to right mouse click to fill, or I'm sorry, to apply the outline color of those curves. So right click and that sets that outline. We could go maybe a little thicker, maybe 28. And we could really continue to increase the thickness as needed. Um, may even want to bring that down a little bit more. So there you go, just a short exercise in logo recreation using the, uh, again, use the knife virtual segment delete tool. And we also use the trim tool to use one shape, one rectangle to trim another. And we used wireframe and the object manager. Hope that was helpful to you.